How's it going, everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another episode of Drawn to Create, the podcast where I draw and talk about art-related things or anything in general. I'm, I'm pretty much starting off these episodes the same way. I feel like I, I say that at the beginning of all of them, but sometimes it's quite awkward to, you know, start a video like this. I never really know what to say. So usually I just say, how's it going, everyone? I hope you're all doing good. And I mean it. I mean, I hope you are all doing good. I hope you enjoyed the previous episode. Last week's episode, I accidentally um, forgot to schedule that one. And so I woke up on Sunday morning uh, at about 7 a.m. And uh, I started to get a few notifications, some of you commenting on that video. And uh, I was like, why, why, why is this video already up and people are watching it and it's because I forgot to put a time I usually um, schedule these for about 8 p.m. on a Sunday and um, that is in the UK the UK time so I'm not sure what time you might get these over where you are but um, I hope you enjoyed it anyways maybe you was able to watch that a lot earlier and maybe you could uh, maybe it suited your I don't know working hours a bit better and um, depending on when you usually work um, I know that I tend to draw a lot more in the morning, which is quite unusual, I think. I think a lot of artists and creative, you know, individuals tend to work through the night, but I prefer to do the opposite. I prefer to get get up early and um, get to work uh, early in the day, and then usually by the time it gets a bit later on, um, I start to sort of slowly, like, degrade in terms of energy and... Uh, you know, commitment to my to my work, and so that's when I start to procrastinate more. And so usually I just wrap it up, and then I go to bed uh, fairly early, not too early, and then I get up and start again. And so yeah, I'm currently recording this at 8 a.m. on a Monday. I usually try and get the episodes out of the way earlier in the week. Um, and so hopefully I'll be on point today. You know, I'm feeling. I'm feeling good for this episode. I think I'm going to talk a bit about motivation, uh, you know, because we all need a bit of motivation now and then. Uh, and I've got a few of my own personal opinions on the subject, and then I'll also talk a bit about the overall wide attitude towards it, you know, like the, the general opinion of, uh, of this thing called motivation. And I think sometimes people put it on a high pedestal when I really don't think it's as important or as beneficial as people make out and we'll get into that sort of stuff soon but I also just want to address a few things one of them is that you know going back to what I discussed in the previous episode about evolving your artwork you might have realized that that's what I'm trying to do recently you know I've been creating a lot of drawings from my imagination and I'm starting to really develop my own understanding and approach to to drawing and uh, I'm currently working on a video that discusses this slow transition from you know the realistic drawing stuff to the uh, the more imaginative stuff and this video I, I've said that I'm, I'm going to make this video some kind of a 250,000 subscriber special but it's really just a, a normal video but it's a bit different compared to the content which I have been uploading recently, which is the tutorials and these episodes, and yeah, the uh, it's going to be a video just talking about my process and my sort of experience with learning how to draw from my imagination, from beginning with the realistic drawing and then, you know, gradually transitioning into relying on my own memory instead of photographs, and uh, yeah, I think it's a video that you should enjoy. I also cover some useful things in that video. I talk about some different methods and techniques, things like your visual library or project-based learning. I get into a bit about the fundamentals um, and all of that stuff should be of value to you. And so keep an eye out for that video. I should have it done within a week or two, depending on um, if I get it edited, because I try and prioritize these episodes, which are weekly. And then I've recently been doing a tutorial every week as well. But I'm also working on some exclusive Patreon content, which is going to be the realistic stuff. And so I'm going to do a series of videos titled Realistic Rendering. Um, I'll try and do them weekly, or I'll do them quite often, and they are going to be exclusive 
on the uh, on the Patreon page, um, which you can check out. I haven't updated the rewards list on that yet. I still need to do that, but I'll be sure to uh, notify you when them videos are on there. And so if you do want some of the, the realistic stuff, I mean, I still do a lot of the, the rendering, especially with these drawings that I'm creating here anyways. I still do a lot of sort of realistic rendering in pencil. And so if you want to check that out, then I will be making some very informative, you know, step-by-step -step tutorials and walkthroughs of how to create all of these different drawings from reference images. And I will also provide you with the reference image so that you can work through and, and create the drawing yourself. And so, yeah, be sure to check that out because the Patreon is, 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 is I think, I think that's going to be like one of the main sources of, of revenue for me to do all of this. I'd like to be able to do this kind of full time maybe. Um, and, and so I think Patreon is something that will allow me to do that. And so, um, yeah, I also just quickly want to cover something else. Um, and it's regarding the, the point that we have just hit in, in terms of subscribers. 250,000. That's pretty crazy. You know, it's 25% of a million, which is insane. Maybe one day I will get to a million. But, um, you know, in terms of subscribers and views and all of that stuff, you know, I don't usually place too much importance on it, um, even, even though I should, because that's obviously, you know, plays a big factor in your success on the platform. But my views are, are quite low in terms of, like, the subscriber amount, um, and I think that's because of a few things. One of them is that one of my videos went viral. Um, it's got about 4 million views up to now. And it's the how to get better at drawing six things you need to know. Um, and I think a lot of people watch that video and then they just click the subscribe button without actually heading over to the channel and looking at the content on there. And so they're not really engaging with the every video that I put out. You know, I have a specific set amount of, of fans that do watch every video that I put out, but you get the people that just subscribe for the sake of subscribing sometimes. Maybe they just liked one video and so they hit that subscribe button which is still a good gesture I, I mean I'm not complaining and then there's also the fact that I have sort of changed up the content which I have been creating over the years you know um, when I started YouTube oh I didn't really intend on this happening but I started with the realistic stuff so I was creating videos showing everyone how to create these realistic drawings and then um, you know obviously as I spoke about in the previous episode it came to a point where I wanted to sort of get away from that and start relying on my own imagination and, and start drawing stuff like that and so um, I had a decision to make and I could either you know, carry on just producing realistic drawing videos and, and stick with that content. And then I'd just be producing videos and not really working on my own uh, ability as an artist. Or I could just take a step back, you know, maybe just reduce the amount of realistic drawings I'm creating, but then also, you know, try and involve some other things into the channel, like uh, a lot of the stuff that I've been learning, such as perspective and stuff, stuff that helps me to be able to draw from my imagination and get to the point that I'm sort of directing myself towards. And so I started to introduce all of this stuff to the channel and obviously people subscribe for specific content. It might not appeal to them. They might not enjoy that content as much as other videos, for instance. And so that's why maybe they don't watch every video. Um, and then obviously because I've been uploading a lot more content like this recently, the, uh, the audience is slowly transitioning and, um, you know, people come and people go and uh, I just need to make sure that I'm staying honest with myself and what it is that I'm creating uh, because <laughs> I suppose it's like, uh, you know, the Matrix, take the blue pill and uh, carry on producing videos for the sake of producing videos, you know, for views and stuff. Or take the red pill and see how deep this drawing stuff really goes. What can you actually do with it? And that's kind of, you know, what I've done. But, you know, struggle for a bit and then hopefully it'll pay off in the long run. And I am seeing the, uh, you know, the benefit in me making that decision. And I don't regret it at all. 
But yeah, Patreon, I've got some content going up on there soon, which covers the realistic stuff. And then I also have the study documents and the process papers, which uh, covers all of the fundamental drawing aspects. Uh, and so, yeah, be, be sure to check out the Patreon page if you haven't already, especially when I update it, because I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff on there. I think that's going to be like the main source of, of revenue for me to be able to hopefully do this full time. And then I'll be able to produce a lot more content as well. So anyways, let's get into today's overall subject now that I have addressed all of that stuff. Uh, and again, you know what I'm like, I'll probably just end up going off on a tangent and talking about other things in between this. But let's try and stay on track. So motivation, my opinion towards it might differ a bit from the overall, you know, opinion amongst the masses, should I say, because... You know, you always see, like, motivational videos on YouTube. Uh, videos that have inspiring soundtracks with edited movie scenes in between them, and then you have some motivational speaker, you know, talking over them and, and saying all of this, and it, it is effective. It, it resonates with you sometimes, and, you know, it gives you that little boost, but then the video ends and, you know, give it an hour, and you're searching up for another one, and you watch another one, and you wait another hour, and then... It sort of dies out and so to me motivation isn't really sustainable um you, i don't think you can rely on it as much as you can let's say uh discipline or something like that you know because if you if you're disciplined then you do it no matter what so motivation is like a little energy boost it's sort of like um motivation is like an energy drink you know even the energy drinks don't really give you much energy uh let's say like a more like a, a shot of caffeine right so say if you need that little boost if you i don't know get a bit of motivation from wherever it doesn't have to be a, a motivational video on youtube but you get this uh spring of motivation and then it gives you a little push forwards and then you can you know take advantage of it for a bit but eventually it dies out you know the it, it runs out and so you have to rely on something else which is usually discipline i mean you have the choice then to stop doing what you are doing and sort of let it get to you and give up or you can keep doing it um, and get through it even though you don't want to do it and that's usually discipline i mean a lot of the time it comes to me drawing something or starting a drawing it's usually starting which is the biggest hurdle um, you know, because you have everything in front of you and it's sometimes overwhelming to try and comprehend what you have to do. And so starting in the first place is the hardest thing. And often you'll see or hear things about people who never really start in the first place. You know, we all know people who talk about doing something, but then never really do it. And that's kind of sad because it's like wasted potential in a way because they don't know what the outcome could be if they start something and that's like one of my worst fears just knowing that you know reaching the end of your life and then thinking that I wish I'd have done this because you know this might have happened or I might have had a better life in a way because you know maybe people don't pursue something or start something out of the fear of failing uh, which is which is understandable but it's an illusion because um you know it's not a good good enough reason i'd rather fail at something and know that i've tried rather than not knowing Im imagine like not knowing what could have happened that's like one of the saddest things to me well i suppose that's regret isn't it and i mean regret will always be there we will always regret things um but we can try and reduce the amount of stuff that we regret by pursuing the things that we want to do and the things that have meaning to us and yeah, this idea of starting something, it is it is scary and it's understandable because, you know, a lot of the time we are entering unknown territory and a lot of things come with that. It will most likely result in just failure all of the time. But then if you just keep at it and keep trying, then usually, you know, it balances out and you learn with each failure. And so you have to just go in head first and, and uh, grab the bull by the horns, should I say, Uh and just really go for it and, and, and try. But yeah, it is understandable because it might also be other problems, you know. Maybe you have you're in a situation where you have other responsibilities that stop you from doing something. And maybe that is a valid excuse. I I mean sometimes 
we try and search for these excuses that can justify us not doing something. You know, it's sort of like convincing ourselves. Uh, and sometimes the excuses are, are good enough in a sense. Maybe you have a family, you have other responsibilities that are bigger than you and you have to take care of them first. Or maybe sometimes the excuse isn't really much of an excuse and you're just sort of using it as a means of, you know, giving yourself the luxury of not pursuing something, but really it's because you, you don't, you just so, sort of don't want to start because maybe it is the fear of failure or it's the fear of judgment from others, which is a big one. I know that starting YouTube was something that uh, took me a while to do. I think I spent years just thinking how good it would be to have a YouTube channel, but then through school and stuff, if you put yourself out there on the internet and started making YouTube videos, people would notice and they'd just ridicule you and, and make fun of you a lot of the time. And most of the time, like, now that I've grown up a bit, I'm able to look at that situation and just realise that it was because a lot of the people who were making fun of you, fun of you were probably just a bit jealous. I mean, it was probably a bit insecure because it's something that they'd like to do, but... Maybe they do. Maybe they're just a victim of all of the problems that I discussed a second ago, and so yeah, you just have to do what makes you happy at the end of the day and take take the red pill. That's what you got to do. You know, if you're gonna leave this episode with any bit of advice, just make sure to take the red pill, okay, and see how far the rabbit hole goes. Because you don't want to end up wishing that you had taken the red pill when really you took the blue pill. Uh, out of comfort, out of fear, and you never will reach your potential of of being able to dodge bullets and stuff. Maybe not dodge bullets, but you get the uh, the analogy that I'm trying to make. So, anyways, I, yeah, again, I've gone off track, but let's get back to it. So I was talking about motivation and the fear of starting something big, and I suppose let's tie that into drawing. Let's say you have a big project, a big drawing project, and it's uh, it's quite overwhelming. You don't really know how to start and um, how to tackle a big project, okay? So um, the first thing that I advise is just to make a list, right? So write down the steps that you will have to take to finish that project. Really try and break that process down of completing whatever it is you need to do. Um, so for instance, if it is a drawing, let's say, um, go f try and visualize the process of actually creating this drawing and write down all of the steps that you will have to take to do it. And then, you know, obviously this can apply to other things as well, but I try and tie everything into the uh, the process of drawing because obviously that's what I do a lot of on this channel. And so try and understand this, this uh, project you are pursuing and break it down so that you have a lot of clarity and you know what you have to do. Again, I think this relates to one of the things that I spoke about in the second episode. I spoke about managing tasks and your time and how lists can really help you manage everything that is usually just floating around in your head. And also in terms of creating a, a drawing that is probably going to take a lot of time. Um, it requires a lot of patience and perseverance and it's a bit of a marathon when it comes to drawing. Because, you know, you can commit a lot of hours in a day to actually working on that drawing. Or you can just work on it, you know, day by day and eventually the drawing will be finished and so figure out what works best for you i know that recently with these drawings which i've been doing for these episodes i try and just smash them out in a day or two and uh usually the day after that i'm kind of a bit burnt out you know in terms of drawing and so i just spend the rest of the day ed editing and stuff um and usually i just try and get the drawing done there and then because it helps me get into that flow state if i'm just constantly drawing uh, whereas if I draw for an hour a day, which I used to when I would go to school, um, you know, I'd just be getting into the drawing and then I'd have to pack it away and go to school. And so it sort of disturbs the, the flow a bit. And so, yeah, also in terms of actually being able to sit there and draw for hours, try and have something on in the background, maybe some music, maybe a podcast, maybe an episode of Drawn to Create, who knows? But try and, you know, have something on in the background, but only have something on in the background if you can 
if you're comfortable with being able to work and concentrate on what you are doing because obviously I usually listen to stuff um, whilst I'm rendering the drawing because rendering is something that I can kind of do subconsciously whereas at the beginning of a drawing when I'm constructing it and doing all of the technical stuff I'm usually just really putting all of my energy and focus into that I'm not really uh, I'm not really having to multitask and listen to something as well and so you know that's the problem I have with audiobooks because every time I try and listen to an audiobook my attention is divided and usually I miss parts of the, the audiobook and so I have to rewind it and, and listen to it again whereas something like a podcast or music is just it doesn't really matter if I miss bits of that whereas a book if you miss like a chapter of a book then you're pretty much screwed so yeah try and have something on in the background to help assist you whilst you are dedicating a lot of these hours to actually drawing and also be sure just to take a short break now and then maybe have a, a drink or something something to eat uh, and also get enough sleep i know that there's usually this you know cliche starving artist who doesn't eat or sleep because they are so invested in their work but i don't really go with all of that just uh, pretty much just work at your own pace and perform to the best of your ability which means just get some sleep because it might pay off in the short term you know you get a project done quicker but in the long term it's just going to catch up with you and then one morning you're going to wake up and you'll feel really sluggish and you know when you when you don't have a lot of sleep you don't perform as well and so you'll be producing uh, a lower standard of work and so just get enough sleep just stop working one day and go to bed and then carry on the next day but don't procrastinate throughout that time that you have if you're maximizing the time that you have then there's no real need to you know miss out on on sleep or important things that you need to do to sustain yourself um anyways yeah going back to some of the points that i was trying to make in terms of you know motivation in general uh one of the things that i think is important is to build momentum and that sort of you know generates this thing called motivation in itself and what i mean by building momentum is well, a personal example, again, would be YouTube, okay? So let's say that I do this drawing, I make a video, and I upload it. And I feel pretty good about uploading a video. I finally finished something, and it's out there. It's ready to go out there to the audience on YouTube. And I'm feeling pretty good after that. I mean, I have that sense of achievement of completing something. And usually it makes me want to make something else and carry on uploading videos. And so let's say that I have two videos scheduled for two weeks in the future. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm keeping on top of my work and now I can uh, work on another video. But I know that this one will be going out three weeks later. And um, I'm keeping on top and I'm always ahead of my own time. And so I can sort of relax a bit. I'm not working um, against all of these stressful deadlines. I mean, I am working against deadlines, but but I'm also able to take comfort in the fact that I have a video ready uh, for the next week or two. And so I can spend more time with the projects that I am working on currently. And yeah, it sort of builds this momentum, whereas, you know, the opposite of that is me rushing each week to get a video out and I'm sort of against the clock. I have all of these other tasks and responsibilities that are interrupting this process of trying to meet this uh, this deadline and get this content done. And that's pretty much me all the way through my uh, architecture studies, you know, when I was trying to do YouTube as well. It was literally like, okay, it's Monday, I need a video by Sunday. So I have all of this architecture work to do as well. So how am I going to, you know, produce a, a decent drawing and plan a video? But somehow I managed to still make videos, but they probably were not as good as they could have been. And I also didn't really have that small amount of time to actually appreciate the fact that I have made something because as soon as I had put something out there, I was on to the next thing, you know, and that's what it's like now. But if I work in advance and I'm able to get ahead of myself and on top of the work, I am able to appreciate the work a lot more and again that helps to build momentum and to motivate me forward 
And so, yeah, that's one thing that I think is important. And, you know, that's one example in terms of YouTube and these drawings and stuff that I create. But another example, which is probably uh, relevant to a lot of us, is, is stuff like going to the gym. I mean, um, I try and go to the gym pretty much like every day. Or, or I try not to miss a lot of days, you know, if I have to miss a day for some reason, that's fine. But let's say if I miss two days or three days, then the chance of going back into the gym is going to be a lot harder. You know, I have to really drag myself in there because um, you sort of lose that momentum. Whereas if you have this, uh, if you're on a streak of uh, continuously working out and going to the gym, then uh, it's easier to keep it up. Whereas if you stop for a bit, it's a lot harder to jump back in. And um, yeah, that's another uh, another example. And so that's the same with anything, I think. Um, and so try and build momentum and plan in advance. And again, all of this can tie into each other, you know, talking about making lists and stuff. Try and plan your day in advance and uh, be prepared for what's to come so that you can execute everything that needs to be done efficiently and uh, successfully, hopefully. So, um, yeah, and, you know, another thing that I think is worth talking about is the actual reason why you are doing something. And this is kind of like, you know, this is going to be different for each person because it's kind of personal. It's your own reason why you find yourself wanting to do something. And if you can really understand the reason why, then you can rely on that and fall back on that reason. And so, obviously, you know, I try it again, I'm, I'm relating to my own experience. You know, when I try and do YouTube or these drawings, drawing is just something that I love to do. And it's just part of my life now. It's pretty much like a lifestyle because it's something that I just revolve all of my time around. And so... You know, the reason why I do that, it takes, it took me a while to try and figure that out. And I still don't really think I have figured it out, but I think it's embedded in me as a person. You know, it, it's in my blood to always try and be creative. You know, there's this uh, everlasting, you know, necessity to create. There's this desire to apply myself and, and actually be creative in any way um, you know and that comes in, in in many forms you know whether that is drawing which is I think drawing is the probably the most direct way for me to actually fulfill this necessity to be creative you know it's very direct and intimate and I think that is the reason why I am attracted to drawing and so it's not such it's not really a point of understanding why I'm doing it it's more or less the fact that I can't not do it if that makes any sense at all and you know me I don't really want to just give this romanticized reasoning for why I'm doing something because that's not really something that appeals to me at all but I do think it has something to do with that you know deep down the underlying reason why is because, you know, that th we have no real other way of, of functioning. There is different types of people in the world. There are people who are creative and there are people who perform better at logical tasks. And that's nothing new, you know, we've, we've known that forever. And so that's just the way that we are programmed in a sense. But, you know, if I was just going to give a more, you know, reason that is a, a bit higher on the surface than all of that stuff, then I'd say that, it's maybe just my my intention of building a career, you know, wanting to be a successful artist for people to recognize me and recognize my work and um, for people to appreciate the stuff that I create and to actually give something that has value to others and, uh, you know, to have meaning behind it and, and create something that when I leave this world is is remembered and left behind. And I think... Yeah, it does come down to legacy in a way, and I think that's why a lot of artists make make work is to leave something behind or to have some kind of um, response to their experience in the world. And um, yeah, I think that might be a reason why. But it's worth thinking about, you know, I'm still always thinking about why I'm doing something. And a lot of the time I'm questioning whether I should be doing something, whether this is, you know, 
me being on the right path and heading in the right direction or whether I'm I should be doing something different and uh, I suppose it's this idea of the unknown that is ahead and whether you know the unknown is going to be something you are happy with or something that you are disappointed with and I suppose that's the the chance that we all have to take but we can try and judge the outcome of that based on what we are doing in the present um, and I think that's the only way to actually do that but yeah think about why you are doing something because again if you really run out of reasonings why you should do something say if you are working on a big drawing that has you know maybe you don't recognize the importance of this drawing i mean at, in, at surface level it's just a drawing if you don't finish it then who cares start the next one but maybe that drawing would go on to amaze a lot of people or maybe you know you don't know what would happen and so try and you know fantasize about the future a bit and, and fig figure out like what could potentially happen if you do do something because that can be motivating as well and I suppose overall it ties back into the idea of having a long-term goal if you have something at the end of it all something to aim for it enables you to more effectively judge whether you are heading in the right direction if you are aiming yourself towards something and you can always you know visualize yourself at the end of this project this task when you have reached that goal at the end you know try and visualize how good it will feel when you get there and that that sensation will probably be enough just to drag you forward a little bit you know when you hit times of procrastination or stagnation think about why you are doing something and think try and really put yourself in that situation of you just accomplishing all of these things and how you will feel uh, in comparison to how you feel now whilst you are on the journey and uh, you know the end goal is all good but don't devalue the actual process of getting there because that's where it all happens that's where everything is created and then once you get there at the end you know you'll probably just be looking for the next thing so there really is no end to it you just sort of have to enjoy the process and that's why don't, you shouldn't get too hung up on where you are at currently in your pursuit of learning how to draw or I don't know maybe whatever it is maybe you want to do something in, in general and so never really you know judge yourself if you are in the process of getting there as long as you are doing the right stuff to get there currently and work into the best of your ability then that's all you can really judge and yeah i think that pretty much concludes this episode this has been episode five of drawn to create i hope you found this one helpful and you enjoyed it in a later episode i i think i'm going to do a, an episode where i just answer some of your questions sort of like a, a q and a ask me anything where you can submit some questions and i'll just spend an episode answering them and it doesn't really matter what the questions are you know they can be personal or about drawing or about anything you know you can ask me what my favorite sandwich is it really doesn't matter just just submit your questions but i'll let you know when i'm going to do one of those um and yeah that's pretty much everything so be sure to check out the patreon page uh, and get ready for the new video which i'll be releasing soon about drawing from your imagination i also hope you like the drawing which i have done today throughout this episode i haven't actually done that yet i need to do it later today or tomorrow um but yeah anyways thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one